right, hi again. Welcome back. Attorney Steve Vondren here. We are talking about tenant workouts, commercial workouts, lease workouts, force majeure, takings, eminent domains. So without further ado, let's head to the Attorney Steve litigation whiteboard. Okay, so here we are. We know that everything's being shut down. We have these stay in place orders now in California. I think New York's doing it as well. Other states are probably likely to follow. So what's happening is a lot of people are going to be out of jobs. Um, car dealerships, I hear, may be shutting down. I mean, there's it's it's insane right now, okay? So we don't know what the final toll is going to be, but people are likely going to lose their jobs. We know I speak to clients every day. Their business is down. Um, restaurants are open, takeout only in many places. Like, that's it's hard to keep a living on that, okay? So lots are going on. The store owners, the property owners, small business owners, everybody's being affected because what happens here, let's go to my board. We have our tenant here, okay? So your landlord, say your landlord is over here. Landlord owns the building, okay? And so you lease a space in the building. So there's my tenant. Tenant's going, where's my customers? The, the city and the county and the states are passing laws saying people can't come in. They need to stay in place. They can't come visit my shop. That's a law. That's something unforeseen that I had no idea when I was over here making my lease. I had no idea this coronavirus was coming. Who could have foresaw something like this? Okay. So that's what's going on. Now, um, in a typical situation, you're going to be bound by your lease. You're going to be bound by the lease. Usually sometimes, as I say, even if the building burns down, you still have that duty to pay rent. But check your contract. You don't know. It may or may not say that. There, I've seen great contracts from 25 pages. In fact, I was just looking at one, had a table of contents, exhibits, a site plan of, of the building, everything, the parking. So it was, it was amazing. So that thing was pretty bulletproof, okay? But there's others that are one pages, two pages. Um, so you may, at this time, you may need an attorney, a real estate attorney, to look at your lease and see what the terms are, okay? Because here's what's going to happen, okay? So you got your landlords up here. They're, let's just say they want 3K, 3K a month, okay? They want $3,000 a month in rent. This person used to be able to pay it, doing fine. You know, maybe they run a sandwich shop or a coffee shop or a deli or something. Doing fine now, but there's no customers. They're not allowed to come in. So they can't meet this payment anymore, this 3000 So they need either some permanent relief or temporary relief. We don't know how long this COVID virus, this COVID-19 as they call it, some call it the China virus, how long this is going to go on. Okay, so um, what's happening now is we're starting to see workouts, commercial workouts, tenant workouts, lease workouts, whatever you want to call it. S similar to what we saw back in 2007 when our firm was a leader in helping homeowners fight for their houses and fight the banks and, you know, banks wanted to make all the money. They got their bailout, but they didn't care about anybody else. Okay, we were there in the trenches, folks. Um, so what you need to do is look closely at your lease or better yet have a real estate firm look at your lease. We can do a low cost, a flat rate fee, depending on the, the, the size of your lease, how many pages we're looking at, and give you a consultation and tell you where you may stand. You may have grounds to reduce your rent. Maybe you can talk the landlord from going in from $3,000 a month to $2,500 or maybe 2000 or maybe even 1500 temporarily, or defer payments to the end, maybe when things are back and you're doing better. There's a lot of different ways that you can work this out. Maybe you have grounds to cancel the lease altogether. So these are things that we can look at, and that may come under like a force majeure clause. And a force majeure clause, I have a sample here, and I did a separate video, if you wanna go look at my video on force majeure clause. But, oh my gosh, I'm going to need my glasses for this. But um, let's see here. Maybe I can read it. Um, a force majeure cl uh, clause in a contract is really just a clause that says if there's an act of God, something weird happens, one or more parties may be able to get out of the lease. Maybe the landlord can get out or the tenant can get out. But you have to read it and see what it says. You're not going to get a one-size-fits-all. This one that I'm looking at says, force majeure, any prevention, delay, or stoppage due to strikes, lockouts, uh, labor disputes, acts of acts of God, like this virus, um, indemn um, 
indemnity uh, labor, labor disputes, governmental regulations and restrictions, governmental controls, judicial orders, civil commotion, and other causes, okay? So these are the things that you're going to be looking at. And then to see what, what it says, what happens if there is this particular one uh, that, that I'm reading to you says, even if you have that act of God, you still have to pay the rent. So um, that is a pretty one-sided benefiting the landlord that's benefiting the landlord big time. So you have to go look at other things, okay? But things we look at in a lease review, force majeure clause. And I have up here my first point, amicable versus aggressive. What I like to do is always start being amicable. Call your owner, your property manager. Hey, here's what's going on. We're having problems. Um, there's new restrictions and rules. Our head counts down to 10 a day, 5 a day, barely getting any takeout orders. We, we're not allowed to have social gatherings. We're not allowed to have people within six feet of each other. There's no business. Okay. Exercise facilities are another one. Okay. So um, look at being amicable at the outset. If that doesn't work, you have all kinds of landlords. You have landlords that are say, you know, I'm going to do whatever I can to help you. Don't pay rent right now. Get me when you're going good again. And you may or may want want to put that in writing. I would probably want to put that in writing. But you know, you'll have landlords that'll work with you. You have other landlords that'll say, hey, the rent's the rent. Rent's due or you're out. Okay. So, you know, you might get those. In those events, you may have to get more aggressive. This is where you may need an attorney letter to say, hey, send them in a letter. Let's look at what? Did the landlord breach anything? So we look at the, the lease we look through it and we talk to our clients. Did the landlord do everything they said they were going to do? Did you have the adequate parking? Did you have the signage? Did they maintain common areas? Did they do this? Did they do that? Did they do the things that they said they were going to do? If not, you can get a little more aggressive and possibly hold them in breach of contract. Okay, so this is when you have to get tough, pull off the gloves or put on the gloves. One of the two, I say just put them on. Um, but looking, did the landlord breach, okay? Um, eminent domain, this is another interesting one. If you look in a good contract, like usually not your one or two pagers, there'll be some language in there about condemnation, eminent domain. This is the government, okay? So now you've got the government over here, okay? That's my picture for government. They come in and they take over the property. They say, we need this for a freeway. They can do that. They have the power to do that. They have to pay the owner just compensation, but the tenant has leasehold rights too, okay? So usually a lease will provide for what happens in the event of eminent domain or condemnation. Now, mostly we're not talking about the government coming in and this coronavirus setting that we're in and taking and buying land. The last thing they're going to do is run around and buy land now. They need the money for so many other things. But there is such a concept of a regulatory taking. A regulatory taking, what's that? Well, that's when a government passes a law, a rule, an order, a regulation, an executive order, something that makes the use of your land uh, harder to use. So maybe they come in and they say, well, well we're going to put a pipeline through your, your office here because this is right where we need the pipeline. Well, obviously, that's going to impinge on your leasehold rights as a leaseholder. That's going to cause problem can require just compensation. It can be a force majeure kind of thing. And when you have regulations, we're dealing with closed bar orders and things like that. No, no, uh, no bars, no restaurants. You know, that is a regulation telling you how you can use your land. So I'm going to do a separate video on a regulatory taking. I don't want to get too much into it right now, but I want you to be thinking along these lines as things that you're going to look at. Now, another thing in contracts in your lease your, is a subleasing clause, okay? Subleasing clause, okay? What's that? Subleasing, let's take a look here, okay? So you're bound, you're the tenant, you're bound by the lease, you gotta pay your three grand a month, right? And you say, I don't have that. So what you can do if the contract allows you to assign or sublease, these, this means you can maybe go find another tenant um, well, somebody who has a business has been always wanting space in here and you can say, Hey, will you come in and you come in and step in and we'll do the lease like a novation. We'll get you out. We'll get me out. We'll get you in. You pay the landlord until the, until the contracts due. 
this person usually will remain liable on the lease. They remain liable for this person to pay. So there's differences, different clauses, whether the landlord can reasonably withhold consent, whether they cannot with reasonably hold consent. Like if it's, let's say it's a tattoo shop and they say, oh, we don't want that in here. We don't want that in here. And you say, well, that's being unreasonable. I need to get somebody in here. Brings up all these other contractual issues that are go in depth. But be thinking, can I assign or sublease? Take a look at that. Um, I also have down here change use, change of use. Um, and this was something that I just saw on the, on the um, news, actually. And it was a company that was a restaurant. And because a change bar order came in, they said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to convert the, the original use of the property, which was restaurant. We're going to convert that to soup kitchen. Okay, so if everybody can do takeout, let's do takeout. So they opened and basically redid it so that it was a soup kitchen so people can come out. Thinking, see, difficult times call for creative thinking. Invention is the mother of necessity, and that's what they did, change the use. Again, but you have to check your contract. Does it give you the rights to do that? Can you work this out amicably with your landlord? You see how this works? And then finally, I put FOP. Anybody know what FOP is? My contract students out there, frustration of purpose or commercial impracticability, illegality. These are defenses to a contract, okay? If something passes a law now, what you're doing is illegal, uh, you may not be able to, to engage in your contract. This go to force majeure. Um, if you have unforeseen circumstances like the coronavirus or closed bar orders, when have we, when have we seen something like that? unforeseen circumstances that make the return performance of the landlord in the lease space um, worthless. It makes it worthless. So there are common law doctrines and defenses to the enforcement of a contract, things that we can look at. Frustration of purpose is certainly one of those, okay? So that's a general legal overview. This is not legal advice. If you need some help with having your lease reviewed, seeing if we can do a workout, work something out with your landlord, whether long-term, temporary, or possibly even a cancellation, give us a call. We offer low flat rate legal fees, and we were a leader, believe me, they had me on Fox News three times. We were a leader in real estate law um, back in 2007 in the meltdown. We were there. Our shoes were literally melting down. Our boots were on the ground melting. So we're here. We have experience in this area. Give us a call. Let's see if we can help you out, okay? You can find more information at attorneysteve.com. Attorneysteve.com. I'm also going to put a link to Tenant Workout. I'm going to put a link to Tenant Workout in the bottom of this video, okay? So that you can just click on that and go right to my services page, okay? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. I'm working hard in the trenches overtime here for you guys. It's got a lot going on. Make sure to subscribe to our video. Have a nice day. We'll see you again.